Good morning, everybody. Apparently, we had such a big party last night that so many people are still not here. Oh, first person, just one more person just showed up. Did you have a good time last night? You had a good time. So, this morning, I'll try to wake everybody up this morning. I want to teach you, share with you. Uh, a song that comes from West Africa. If you would like to join me, please uh, stand up and let's, let's do this together. And this song goes like this. Many of you may know it. Uh, run, tan, tan, uh, run, tan, tan. Gooly, 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 run, tan, tan. Uh, run, tan, tan, uh, run, tan, tan. Gooly, 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 run, tan. Hooley, hooley. Gooly, 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 rat, tat, tat, gooly, 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 rat, tat, tat. Okay, now we're going to do some exercises with the song, okay? You've been practicing it? I rat, tat, tat, I rat, tat, tat, gooly, 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 rat, tat, tat, I rat, tat, tat, I rat, tat, tat. Gooly, 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 rat, tat, hooley, hooley. Gooly, 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 rat, tat, tat, hooley, hooley. Gooly, 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 rat, tat, tat. And we're, so we're going to do this. Everybody knows this now. We've rehearsed it. Let's rehearse it once. But here's a disclaimer. The first time you do gooly, gooly, please turn to your right, not my right. Your right. Okay? And the next time, to your left, okay? And JCI is not responsible for any accident that may happen in the course of this. I just wanted to share with you some, um, a few words today because the world we are living today, I was reading a book coming here, we all have fears. Every human being, every living thing on earth has fears and wants. So I want to talk today about our fears and Pedro you can go on to the next slide. Because when you ask people about their fears, what, do, what, what are some of your fears? Just shout it out. Failure. Failure. What else? Spiders. Spiders. Snakes, right? Heights, right? What else? Water. <laughs> oh my God, don't let the Japanese hear that. <laughs> just smile by water. What else? What? Gaining weight. Gaining weight. <laughs> yeah, that's one for me. What else? Hair loss. What? Hair loss. I have overcome that a long time ago. 
Yeah, but these are the things that we all say are our fears. But nobody tells you about those. When you turn on the television set, you read the newspapers, nobody tells you about those fears. Yet when we ask you or you ask people, they would say those are their fears. But how many of us, when we are asked this question, deep down us say it's the fear of the order? How many of us have our fears been the fear of terrorism, for example? The, the fear of another religion? The fear of invasion of other people in, our, in the way we live our lives? We live at a time in the world where we have to peacefully coexist on planet Earth, and this means that we have to look beyond the man-made borders because there are hardly any natural borders between us. And for those that are natural, we've, technology has allowed us to be able to overcome them. But the records show that the worst fears that we have are really about the one who speaks another language that we do not understand. It's really about the other ethnicity that's very different from us. The people, the religions that are different from us. And we are told from when we are born that the other is different from us. And we carry that with us all through our lives. And it defines how we make decisions, how we engage in politics, how we hire people, how we engage even in business with people. And those are the greatest limitations and impediments that we have in the world that we live in today to establish a world that is more peaceful and collaborative. We are held behind by our own obstacles that most of the time are imaginative because someone told us that the order is different. But an organization like this offers us the opportunity to understand these differences, to overcome these obstacles, to reach beyond these boundaries that have been drawn amongst ourselves and find ways in which we can peacefully coexist. Last week I was speaking at an event and I, I did mention the fact that human beings, the characteristics of living things, are that they would always move from adverse conditions to favorable conditions. And no mountain that's going to stop them. No wall that can be built that would stop them. No river too wide to cross. Human beings would always move from adverse conditions to favorable conditions. And we, who have the opportunity to be global citizens, to engage with people all over the world, must understand that we have what is common amongst us is a lot more common amongst us than what we are told divides us. We are the human race. And if we can understand that, we can all overcome the fear of the order. That is the magic I feel every morning when I come to see a diverse room like this and see people from different parts of the world united for a common purpose. And I wish we could take this and translate this into every meeting room, in every local organization, in every country. And maybe we will not succeed in our lifetime to change the world, but maybe we will plant the seeds today so that our children and our children's children will have a better life. That's the magic. Pedro, can I have the... We have to feel the magic this morning, right? We have to feel the magic. I feel it. Do you feel it? Come on. Feel the magic in the air. Everybody.
back and try again, use your acupuncture framework, and keep going. You know, who here is too shy to share a bad idea you had? Who here is not too shy to share a bad idea you guys have had? Raise your hand if you're cool, but think about the bad ideas you've had, and I want you to share them with them. Remember, guys, failure is just the first step in the path toward success, right? So that's what we want to do today. We want to have a good time and, and share some bad ideas. Uh, we need someone to help us judge some bad ideas. Who uh, would be qualified to do that? Uh, I need someone executive level, like presidential almost. Like, read the like, the, how about the world JCI president, Brian Lee? Let's invite President Brian on stage. Yeah, he's done an amazing job this summer, thank you guys. And we're gonna send uh, Chrissy around. I want you to raise your hand if you've got a terrible, awful, no good idea that uh, either you once implemented or tried or thought about that you're willing to share with us. Good morning, President Brian. All right, who's got a bad idea? I want to see some hands in the air. You get no bad ideas. Okay, so this is something we have to work on. Have you ever had a bad idea? Waking up to attend the morning show, but I'm just kidding. Whoa! Whoa! <laughs> I'm just joking, I'm just joking. That was a bad idea. <laughs> there you go, thank you. Good morning. Does, does anybody have any bad ideas that, we want to sh that you'd like to share? Chrissy, have you had any bad ideas today? Yeah. <laughs> Somebody has a bad idea. Somebody raise their hand. Do you have a bad idea, Michelle? She was telling me. All right, please, please, let's, let's get the microphone down there and, uh... Here we go. Our vice presidents are full of bad ideas. Hey, guys, don't be shy. Don't be shy to share yeah, that idea. With the ice cream. <laughs> yeah. What's on the microphone now? So I've probably had lots of bad ideas. And there's probably people in here that could tell the story better than I can. But uh, about three years ago, we had to re-establish JCI Sydney, and the national president of Australia at the time asked me if that could be my job, because I lived there. And I thought it was a good idea just to, uh, you know, make a date that, and put it out there and invite everybody to come. I thought it was gonna be that easy to set up a chapter again. Uh, and the first day, I booked a meeting room, I had uh, nibbles and drinks, and I was by myself. Did you eat all the food? I took it home. <laughs> yeah. So the thing is, I set the date, but I forgot to tell anyone. Oh. <laughs> But you learned something, didn't you? I learned a lot. So I set the same date the following month. I clearly didn't learn enough. <laughs> That's fantastic. Two people turned up. It was like the first Wednesday of the month. 200 <laughs> But look, I'm very happy to report that I was persistent and I got really good at using my networks and social media and uh, JCI Sydney is a flourishing chapter that President Brian visited earlier this year, right? I did. <laughs> I did. It, it's flourishing, it's really true. Yes. And that's a perfect example. A bad idea that kept developing and kept developing into success. That's how it happens. Somebody else has got to have a bad idea to share. Otherwise, President Brian's job is simply going to be hand her the Oh, we got a swag bag for the winner. We should have yeah, said that. Yeah. I forgot to say that. We've we got, got prizes that you too. win. Anybody else? Any bad ideas? Yes, yes, one right over here. Right over here, yes. No. Uh, my name is Noah. When I was a uh, vice president at the National, we decided to celebrate the World International um, Psychology Health Day. So we decided to bring on a psychiatrist and ask him to give a lecture to raise awareness about depression, bipolar disorder, and stuff like that. We did not ask enough about the doctor. So when the doctor came, we were surprised. <clears throat> it was something like 
80 years old. He sat on a chair, did not even stand to explain about the diseases. Sat on a chair, started talking so slowly. And the crowd was so angry with him, and he wanted the air conditioner on a certain level. He wanted stuff, and he started talking slowly and slowly. And when they asked a question, he used to say, no, 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 no. It was a disaster lecture. It did not raise awareness. It only caused me depression. Thank you. <laughs> So a little preparation goes a long way, right? Sounds like my grandfather when we have dinner. Yes, we've got a, 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 an awful idea back here from this gentleman. <laughs> Embarrassingly bad, terrible, no good, awful ideas. Thank you. Um, I think one of the terrible ideas was trying to tell a joke. Trying to tell a joke? Me trying to tell jokes? You're right, that's bad. No, you try to tell a joke. Well, um, I think in my case, in my country, we had a struggling local organization this year. And with the president that I thought, he was very energetic at the beginning of the year, and I thought he was going to be the star of the show this year. Boy, was I so wrong. I think the better idea was in trying to solve that problem by dictating to this guy. I thought we had to figure out. We we had a script on what you were supposed to do to fix the problems. Um, I think towards our national convention, we then figured that the, the organization was dying. Until after the national convention, we figured the people in there have the solution to their own problem. They understand better what is going on. And I think what we learned out of it is, often as leaders, we sit in the boardroom and we think we have the solution to the problems. At best, those are hypotheses. Yes. They are hypotheses until they are tested, and ours failed dismally. And right now, what we have is the very people who own the problems, who have the problems, are solving the problems by themselves. And yeah, sitting in a room and thinking you have a good idea before it's tested in the market is really a terrible idea. Oh, that's beautiful. 100%. That's great. <laughs> All right, so thank you guys for sharing. I think that's those three challenging ideas. I, I, I've never heard terrible ideas, just challenges. But uh, which one of those would you think wins the swag bag, President Bryan? <laughs> this story was the uh, That was most impressive, yeah. That was very impressive in terms of how bad it was. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, Come on up and get your swag bag. Yes, please. please. Yes. This is best time material and a bottle of Prozac. And no more bad ideas from the board, okay? Let us preserve the dignity and the honor of the 22 Board of Directors. Oh. Thank you, President Ryan. Give it to President Ryan. Thank you, sir. Oh, wait. Another bad idea. Hold on. Hold up. You got another bad idea? I, I know that you wanted to preserve the honor of the board. But, you know what? I think, Ron, did, do you have any bad ideas? Ron? Rhonda, do you think that maybe it was a bad idea to come to morning show today? I think Rhonda should come up on stage. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. On a special day like today. And I think that we should also invite Sarah and Danielle on the stage. Yeah. And we'll have everybody sing Happy Birthday. Did I see the big 4-0 there? 
So that was a good idea that's been tested 40 times. <laughs> okay, thank you all, all of you that participated in our bad ideas to good ideas session. Thank you for, for Rhonda for being here. I think it's time that we moved on. Yes. So what we're going to do now is we're going to invite up two people who are very innovative, who have gone back and got engaged, who have tested ideas and come up with some really, really innovative ways to create positive change. So would you all please put your hands together for Hassan Lugwa from Extremely Together of the Kofi Annan Foundation and Heidi Soba from World Team of Day. into a proactive practitioner in challenging extremist ideologies. So very welcome. Round of applause. We also welcome Heidi Salva, who has served as head of networks at Let's Do It World since January 2014. She has helped to build a global network team of leaders of 150 countries. Heidi holds a diploma in chemical engineering, environment management and international business. She's a green thinker and has participated in the very first cleanup in Estonia in 2008. Very welcome. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to ask our guests a couple of questions. I'm going to start with Hassan, if that's okay. So Hassan, on July 10th in 2011, it was always going to be a life-changing day for you. But how did you fight the urge to hate? How did you fight the urge to take revenge and instead turn that into looking for solutions and action? Yeah, thank you so much. Um, I must say that uh, I'm a football fan. I love soccer. And uh, on that night, I joined three of my colleagues to the rugby grounds in Kampala, Uganda, to watch uh, what was the World Cup finals between Holland and Spain. Like any other young person, I was excited about the event, but little did I know that it was going to turn out as the darkest moment of my life. I as we enjoyed the game towards the 78th minute. I had the loudest sound of my life, and uh, when I looked on my left hand side, all I could see was a huge dark smoke. I could see uh, the ladies that we were watching the game with in pieces. I could not recognize their bodies anymore. I felt like this is something out of this world. So I I started running for my life. But as again as I ran towards the uh, the exit, another blast went off and massacre. So people falling like rain eyes. It was disastrous but I managed to walk out of the carnage. Um, even though I was feeling numb. I was taken to hospital and uh, discharged the following morning. Uh, when I was discharged and uh, was um, back at my parents' home, I watched the news and uh, the, what the, the papers were uh, writing that very morning was that the Muslims had killed people. And uh, also, I saw young people being paraded as suspects and accomplices to this attack. So for me, that uh, got me puzzled. I felt like there's something to do here because I asked myself so many questions. Why would someone abandon their future and uh, become uh, terrorists and uh, become suicide bombers? Why would uh, a young person sign on to a terrorist group that preaches primacy? And why would someone believe that when you kill another person, you get a direct passport to heaven. So for me, I felt like I needed to be part of the solution. The young people that were paraded had different challenges that drove them into, um, into uh, joining those groups. And uh, for me, I felt like I needed to start an organization that would offer positive alternatives to those young people that 
are being continuously lowered into joining the extremist groups. That's why I formed the Uganda Muslim Youth Development Forum. And uh, because of my work with the young people and the religious leaders and teachers, uh, tr trying to empower them on how they can identify the early signs of youth radicalization, I got an opportunity to join the uh, Extremely Together initiative under the Kofi Annan Foundation. And uh, the Extremely Together initiative offered me a platform to reach out to more people around the globe and more young people. Thank you. That's amazing. I, I admire her. doing the same work that I do uh, from different countries of the world, from uh, London, from uh, uh, Philippines, from Somalia, from Nigeria, and others. And um, for other young people, especially in the JCI uh, world, um, where we have our social media platforms, our Facebook pages and Instagram pages and uh, Twitter, you can join the conversations, you can like the pages and join the conversations, um, ask us a few questions, but also invite us in your countries, because we developed a, a toolkit uh, that is uh, a peer-to-peer -peer guide for young people on how they can uh, prevent violent extremism in their communities. So invite us in your countries, invite us in your communities to empower you, to um, build your capacities and how you can engage other young people that are living on the periphery of life who have no solutions to the challenges that they face. Thank you so much. Round of applause for So let's talk to Heidi now. Who here was involved in the World Cake Day? Why the rest of you whose hands are not up, not involved in World Cleanup Day? It was an amazing day. We were all so, so proud. Heidi, what do you think was different about World Cleanup Day? What were the strategies that you used to get the whole world together to clean up in one day? I think it's an extraordinary project because it was the first time. It was just one day when 158 countries worked all together. And what kind of strategies we had behind I think the most important here is actually a people. So uh, people who uh, do have the same passion, who are sharing the same aim. And if you talk about the selection of finding the leaders, also among the GCI, also among different organizations, movements, then we talk about passion. And passion is something which is relating us all. And this is like a fundamental, it's, a, it's like a bonding the hearts and minds. And this is the most important if you talk about the civic movements. And actually, this is how simple it is. There are no any kind of other strategies. It's just simply a people and passion and understanding what we are doing together. <coughs> bonding hearts and minds. Another thing is we have also technology. So uh, we created uh, um, an application uh, for mapping the trash around the globe. So if you talk about 158 countries, majority of them took part of the mapping contest also in Sunset and JCI. It went very well. Why we are doing it is to map the trash situation in different uh, countries to understand what kind of um, waste we actually are talking about. We did actually a brand mapping as well. And um, Secondly, it brings a very good understanding about calculating resources which is needed for the national cleanups. If we talk about people and all the needs for the cleanup day, like gloves, water, and etc. Um, the strategy is also if we talk about the headquarters, which is currently in Estonia, is selection of the core team people. Each of them have been um, a good experts in very concrete teams and topics. If you talk, talk about marketing, if you talk about the technology, or if you talk about the people, then uh, those people do have the background. But if you talk about the national leader, then our message is the passion is most important because through the passion, 
you can actually talk to the audience. Through the patch hop, you actually can address the governments and all the stakeholders who are around of, of, around of you. And through the passion, you can find the people come to your team, and then you actually can select upon the competences. So this is our strategy. It was a good strategy. It definitely worked. <laughs> I think for me, those videos were so impactful. You know, the wave of trash coming towards you. I guess the next question is, what, what's next for World Cleanup Day? What's next? What can we do next? What's the strategy? What's the long-term goal? As an organization, we, um, I have to say, develop in an organic way. We didn't expect so huge uh, growth. And in the last days of the World Cleanup Day, we had uh, five new countries on board. Their expectation is that we are continuing with the cleanups. Um, there might be a next World Cleanup Day also in 2019. For that, we um, sent out a questionnaire to our network because we want to engage all the people because we are bonded in, in global level and understand what the expectations uh, from the network leaders and teams to understand what they expect to go further, um, what is uh, uh, this kind of uh, feedback, our work, what we have done so far. Uh, secondly, we will have a uh, Clean World Conference 24th up to 27th in Tallinn, where we expect all our, our network and all the partners coming also. And uh, then we will make this kind of huge decisions. Mm. And thirdly, we have Keep It Clean Plan, uh, which is uh, like a guideline worked out by Zero Waste Europe uh, top scientists and Estonian top scientists as well. Um, to show the best examples and guidelines for the circular economy and zero waste uh, topics. And uh, we, I made a calculation before the World Cleanup Day how much of our countries from 158 do have a collaboration in, in, in uh, public sector level. Uh, also, of course, talk, we are not talking about uh, how much we engage in national level different kind of organizations if it's different uh, sectors, but 82 countries are working with the pub, uh, public sector and it's, I think it's a fantastic outcome because if we want to change how this world right now is facing the problem with the trash, we should work in cross-sector level. We should engage not just civic movements or communities but also public sector because we are talking about the legislations. And if 82 countries already are working with the public sector people, then I think it's fantastic outcomes. So it means that this kind of uh, power of being in community and changing the world is engaging us as a public sector. I think it's fantastic outcome. Super. Are you guys still happy to be engaged at World Cleanup Day? Ready to do more? Huge round of applause for our two guests, Hassan and Heidi. Thank you. All right, that was just purely inspirational, wasn't it? Okay. So it seems to me like our, our theme of today is innovate. And innovation seems, by our examples here, these amazing organizations and initiatives are innovated. And, and they're sprung forth, so they always start with a challenge. Right? A challenge that has to be addressed, and that's our job as JCI members. So I think what I'd like to do is let's look up at the screen and let's uh, let's talk about this. Turn to your neighbor now. Now is the time where we uh, kind of participate and, and talk amongst yourselves. Turn to your neighbor and ask them, what techniques or strategies do you use when challenges arise in your work? Okay, so we're going to go ahead and give you guys just a couple of minutes to talk amongst yourselves about what techniques and strategies you use to solve the challenges. Here we go. We're starting in five. In five, four, three, two, one. Let's go.
All right, 25 more seconds. Make sure both people get a chance to share your thoughts with the person next to you. ¿Dónde será la próxima? No sé, pero necesitamos una conferencia bien arriba, bien en la cima, en lo alto. Mmm, complicado llevar a la gente a Qué la cima. gracioso sos. Dale, pasame el mate. Ahí va. Igual, ¿te imaginas todos los jóvenes de América en Mendoza? ¿Qué haces? Estoy armando el equipo para hacer sede 2019. Muy bueno. Confirmado, chicos. Necesitamos un lugar para 600 personas. Hay que buscar. Bueno, tú. Make sure that all members of JCI go to Conference of the Americas. 
get the full Mendoza experience. Guys, you're not going to want to miss this opportunity to uh, visit the southernmost country in the world. It's filled with mountains, vineyards, color, and opportunities. So uh, make sure you get to Mendoza if you can. Now, here, we've seen videos from the 2019 African and Middle East Conference, the European Conference. I feel like there's one we're missing. Anybody? That's right, yeah. How about we go ahead and take a look at the 2019 Asia Pacific Conference and we'll see what they have in store for us today. <laughs> Jejuat, International Free City and International Convention City of Korea. As a geopolitical gateway to East Asia, Jeju Island is leading the new maritime era of the Asia Pacific. More than 180 nations can travel visa-free to Jeju. Direct airlines are connected to major cities at home and abroad, and well-developed harbor transportation systems bring in an increasing number of tourists from cruise ships. Jeju is the only place that won triple crowns for its natural and geological heritage from UNESCO. Known as a beautiful, mysterious treasure island, Jeju has been selected as one of the new seven wonders of nature. Man and nature dwell in harmony, unfolding Jeju's unique culture and history. As a leader in the resort-type convention industry, environmentally friendly ICC Jeju has added to its beauty by taking its building shape after the image of Jeju Island. Tangna Hall, the main conference hall of ICC Jeju, can accommodate up to 4,300 people. It has hosted large-scale international and domestic meetings and banquets, cultural performances, and sports events. Hala Hall, which has witnessed Asian leaders in action, can facilitate up to 660 people. With its lobby, Sando Hall can host meetings of over 300 guests. Yongju Hall and Baekrock Hall can each have six to seven hundred. As many as 17 additional small meeting rooms can be partitioned to meet your demand for various sizes of events. Event Hall with three partition rooms. Iodo Plaza, an outdoor performance and catering space for you to enjoy scenic beauty in sky. All these exhibition and event facilities surrounded by Jeju's natural beauty add value to your events. Business, vacation, and shopping are within a few steps in ICC Jeju. A duty-free shop featuring a wide selection of international brands. A classic restaurant for a fine dining experience and a shop displaying Jeju's special products are at your service. ICC Jeju is located in the heart of the Jungwoo Tourism Complex, Korea's world-renowned tourist resort. It is surrounded by diverse tourist facilities and natural beauty. Within 30 minutes by car, you can reach top-class hotels, delicious dining venues, world-class golf resorts, breathtaking ocean views, Ole trains, and Mount Hala. The Korean Tourism Organization appraised ICC Jeju as the best venue for meeting rooms, information and communication services, equipment and safety area in its analysis report of surveys about international meetings.
Yeah, I heard there were quite a few amazing workshops yesterday. How many here attended the strategic planning workshop? I see a few. I heard it was. I heard great things about strategic planning. How many of you attended? Uh, there was a thing last night. I forget what it's called. Global Village. Have I got a Global Village? Is that amazing or what? Oh my goodness! I, I, I heard I was there. I wonder why I said so many people at the strategic planning workshop and so many people at Global Village. Did you do some strategic planning at Global Village? Uh, <laughs> I saw a, a few strategic partnerships being formed. Say that. You know what? Because we're doing the morning show, it's really important to get a good night's sleep. I know I got a really, really good night's sleep because I went to bed early, left Global Village early. Mask. You were probably busy last night. I don't sleep. It's okay. I'm here for you guys. This is my favorite part of the morning show. It's where we get to see the whole action from yesterday summarized into one video that Matt spent all night editing. So we'll be we'll have a better roll. who's going to lead this organization in the future. We had lots of great trainings and, of course, General Assembly, serious business. But Wednesday's also the day for Global Village, so it's also about fun. Excuse me. <laughs> Today's featured member from JCI Nigeria, Ms. Adetoli Jutan. My name is Aditola Chicho from JSA Nigeria. I'm the Executive Assistant 2018 President with Matt Bradley. Today, today, live from an Executive Assistant at the World Congress, I'll say it's very busy, however, full of learnings. My primary job and focus um, is on the work pressure. So, it's our responsibility as assistants to try to remind him and bring him up to speed, just to sort of make his life better. So, our day started um, after breakfast, of course, with the morning show. Quite early. There was a lot of talk and engagement, and it was quite fun, actually. His role at the trade show, he was supposed to declare it open, officially declare it open, and then, of course, we'd go through the stalls one after the other. At some point, I had to ask if all those things were manufactured in India. I was so impressed. I was extremely impressed. And then, uh, well, it gives me hope for my own country. When we were done with the trade show, we came back for the power talk by Gopal, the monk. He hit home a couple of times. Um, some really power talk, exactly what it was called power talk. Um, I started reading his book already in the midst of my very busy day. After the power talk, sure, we had to listen to our candidates, um, hear what they had to offer the organization in 2019. President Brand's local organization arranged a reception in its honor, and then he was hosting VIPs, board members, advisors, and co to launch, just to say thank you for 20, 2018 for supporting the Cultural Council of the Year. So that got me a bit busy, or busy. <laughs> While Anatoly was busy at the VIP lunch, other members had a fun afternoon learning some dance moves straight out of Bollywood. General Assembly. The General Assembly for this afternoon was supposed to take reports and all of that from the defense officers and HQ. The next big thing tonight is um, the JCI Japan reception for President. For me, I've been to Japan twice, by the way. And um, every time I hear Japan, quite frankly, I look forward to it, whatever it is. We look forward to the JCI Japan reception. It gives President Brian an opportunity to speak with members, get to meet with them, talk to them one-on-one. -on -one. President Brian was also kind enough to tell us how important Anatoly is to his team. Professionally, Anatoly is an events manager, but she's been very active with JCI, and a lot of pressure has been put on her to make sure that JCI Nigeria continues to do impact and positive change in the years, in next year and the years to come. 
Wonderful, thank you. You have Anatola, I have Chad. Well, um, I hope Chad is as good as Anatola. Not quite, but he's getting there. Well, that's good. <laughs> Therefore, every one of my friends that I've yet to see, I would see everyone, ask some free time, some play time, and then you're able to sort of mingle. Yeah, mingle, that's the word. Yet another incredible global village in the books. I couldn't find my friend Addis Koa. She was in there somewhere, but I lost her. But I did find all these friends. Did you guys have a great time tonight? Yeah! Yeah, they did have a good time. I hope you had a good time. Let's have an incredible Thursday. Good morning, Goa. One more hand for uh, our good friend Anatolia. Stand up, stand up. There you go. She's amazing on camera, isn't she? And you know who I think really deserves a round of applause after that? Chad. Chad. Give it up for Chad the Candle Man, everybody. Chad. God bless him. I love these videos. I mean, you can always go back on YouTube and look at them, or if you miss a conference, I always tune in to see, to see what Matt and the guys have come up with. So yesterday was a really good day. Today it's all about innovating and the program does not disappoint. So what have we got coming up today? Well, we have the Between the Power Talk featuring Shamana Vala... Oh, I'm not so good with these names. <laughs> Will I try that again? Shaima Valabija. And we also have the Dale Carnegie Workshop and the Local Leaders Workshop. So there is a ton of stuff to do today and go on. So many things to do, Kira. Now let's learn a little bit more about these workshops by transitioning into a special segment to talk more about the exciting impact you can create here at the 2018 JCI World Congress today's action talk. Now, to give you a preview of the Dale Carnegie's action-oriented leadership sessions that can greatly develop our skills as young active citizens, please welcome Katie Lane. Good morning. yesterday. I loved seeing the video. Let's all do this. As we kick it off this morning, go ahead and just turn to the either the person next to you or the person sitting behind you or in front of you and wish them a good day. Wish them a good morning. Okay. That was, oh, that was pretty good. That was pretty good. But I think you've got a little bit more in you. I think you can give a little bit more. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to turn and greet the same person, but we are going to greet them like they are a long lost best friend. And we're gonna really connect with them, put some oomph into it, put some enthusiasm into it. Let's hear the room get loud. Ready, go. <laughs> Connect to people, 
then we can get cooperation, then we can influence change. One of the key themes over the past couple of days that people have been discussing in our sessions is one of the Dale Carnegie principles. And it is all about trying honestly to see things from the other person's point of view. Trying honestly to see things from the other person's point of view. Think about that as it relates to motivating others, as it results to getting people to take action. The only surefire way to get somebody to do something is to make them want it. The only surefire way to get somebody to do something is to make them want it. And sometimes we have to innovate our approach to connect with them, to get that cooperation, to influence that change. I surely hope that I'll get a chance to see some of you in my sessions over the next couple of days. Again, if you can't make it, don't worry. Make sure to ask somebody who has been to share some of the knowledge with you. That's what we're here to do at the World Congress, to connect with others and to share the knowledge. Thank you so much for having me this morning. Hope everybody has a great day. Thank you so much, Katie. Who's going to make it to Katie's session today? Pre-register. Very smart. More, maybe? Okay, don't forget to go and tell all your friends about Katie's session so she has a few more people there. We're so lucky to have her here from the Dan Carnegie. Institute. So next up, we're going to do another short action talk to tell you what's happening at today's advocacy talk. So we would like to welcome Julia Zimmerman of the Ban Ki-moon Center for Global Citizens. Citizens, and she's going to tell us a little bit more about the advocacy workshop. So welcome, Julia. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. How are you feeling today? Good. Good? Good? I think we should do a little stand up and sit down again because it's still morning and we're still waking up. So who here is working in advocacy in some way? Stand up if you work in advocacy. Yeah, so there's a few that are working in a dedicated advocacy field and who considers themselves an advocate for something? That you advocate for something or someone else a cause? Probably a lot of you do. Okay, sit back down. Stand up if you consider yourself a global citizen. <laughs> that looks about right. Well then, I think you definitely would find yourself quite happy to come to our session today. You can take a seat. Um, right after this, after the morning show, in Lawn 1 at 10.15, we're going to be having a workshop called the Global Citizen Mindset, and it's going to be an advocacy workshop. I will, I will be facilitating it. I'm from the Ban Ki-moon Center for Global Citizens, and we have a fantastic panel put together for you, including uh, representatives from the, from the Kofi Annan Foundation, the Let's Do It World Foundation, and other JCI initiatives that are making a huge difference as advocates in the world. So we hope that you will come and check it out. It's gonna be very interactive. We will have a panel discussion as well as round table discussion. So I hope to see you all there very shortly. Thank you very much for your time. Have a great day. <laughs> All right, who is excited for an amazing Thursday at JCI World Congress 2018? Yeah? All right. It's come to that part of the day no. where morning show is finished. But, hello. Can you remember what? what is today's theme before you go? Yeah. Are you going to go out there today and innovate? Are you going to go and innovate? Yeah. Are you going to come back and join us tomorrow morning for the last edition of the morning show? Yeah. Great. We're going to leave you with this quote on the stage. And please enjoy your day. Innovate and engage with each other. And we'll see you tomorrow. Good morning. Go up. Go fill the magic in the air. And go up. <laughs> <laughs>